Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the big show. I am your host, Jerk, and how is everybody doing? I know why you're happy. It's because it's hump day. A day that finds you stuck in the middle of the week, as equally far from the beginning as you are from the end. The midlife crisis of the work week, the calm before the storm, the summer before the autumn of our youth. I guess when you think about it, looking forward to the passage of time is a fool's errand. What we should be doing is taking advantage of the time we have to explore the unknown, to try things we've never tried, to get a CV onto the big show. So here they are, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for the Tech Tree Tier 5 Russian aircraft carrier. Give it up for Sarah. You know, folks, before I made this video, I went over to Tactic Angel's channel to find out the history of this ship, and wouldn't you know, there wasn't one. And there is a reason we don't hear about the Russian aircraft carriers of World War II, and that's because it would require a mysterious, electronically charged storm-like vortex that would send you and your crew back into an alternate reality. But this is a video game, and if you're coming to it to learn your history, well, that would explain a lot about our player base. So right, me and a carrier, just like how 3-6 Mafia said they would never do one for the ladies, and then eventually did one for the ladies, I too said you would never see a carrier Kraken, and here I am delivering one. And to do that, I needed a commander and company to send back to this alternate reality, and we have Mike Neskov with Jersey Von Jovi and some other guy? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I have no idea if this is good or bad or even what I was thinking because I have literally played less than 10 carrier matches total, and the last time I played one was when the German carriers were added. So why was I inspired to try them again? Uh, basically because it was a super hot day and you can play this class stretched out on the floor in your tidy whities I am not a carrier player. I don't have much experience in them either. But my basic approach to this match was if I was one of these blue ships on my team, what would I be cursing our carrier player for not doing? And then I would try to do that. And honestly... That seems like a very effective approach to having good games in carriers. Do what you wish a carrier would do when you are not in a carrier. Huh. You know, it sounds so simple, and yet the answer remains so elusive for so many. <laughs> so my plan at first was to find the destroyers and keep them spotted so my teammates could shoot them. And they shot the one down, I believe it was a Subra Chalini. And now I'm trying to help keep the second one spotted, which I think is a Minikaze. But when I lost sight of them in their smoke, I just decided I would go and drop my load onto the face of what? All right, all right. Okay, I would drop my ordinance on some lowly ships like this one, and then I will just jump back to my carrier, reposition, hopefully not have my autopilot hopped up on goofballs, and then just go send out another strike team to try and find this remaining destroyer. Now, do I think carriers are needed in this game? No, no I do not. Do I just immediately leave a lobby with a carrier in it? No to that as well. A good carrier player armed with an above average team will absolutely wreck the opposing team, that's for sure. But a good carrier player played on an average team of taters, well precious, some games are just unwinnable. It is a powerful class, that's for sure, but much of the carrier's power is at the mercy of their teammates. That all said, we know Ouija wants this class to be more popular. 
they just did a blog post about it not too long ago and we see all the XP boost they gave for this line and now they're desperately trying to populate higher tier games by adding the Kaga to the Bureau. But I, myself, and I suspect many others, we just don't find the class all that much fun. If you do, more power to you. I don't particularly like to eat mushrooms, unless they're served by Michelin star chefs. Huh. Maybe a better example. I don't particularly like tequila. No, actually, I, I don't mind really good tequila. Well, well you know, I, I don't like something out there. <laughs> that other people like and I'm okay with that I am secure enough in my masculinity to show my sensitive side there we go so regardless of the fact that I don't particularly enjoy the class nor do I particularly think that they add anything to the game they are a part of it and if you continue to play this game that's something you have to accept or hit the bricks pal which I'm sure some have and some will continue to do. The question that I think remains to be seen is if the carrier population will ever get to the point that Ouija deems it a success. Not all that long ago, the stats for class choice at tier 7 and up were posted on the Discord, and carriers were only 3%. And I'd be willing to bet that the majority of that is on the weekends. Now, I don't know if there's some slow-moving wave of CV players still grinding out the first two lines just ready to smother Tier 7 in carrier matches, but I doubt it. And if the dev team in their infinite wisdom brings in legendary tier carriers, well, they will need to double the size of that balancing department because they can't even get legendary tier heavy cruisers to work yet. And watch this blind drop. Bonk. Finally... Both destroyers are removed, and now I get to run around streaking the quad with <laughs> whatever I please. So obviously, I am still grinding out this line. I haven't even touched the British carriers. And one of the things that concerns me about this line is that the Tier 7 carrier will have evasive maneuvers. When these Russians drop their ordnance, they drop everything at once, and having the ability to essentially make your planes invincible... That seems, um, a little sus to me, but what is another sus thing in this game when we still have will to rebuild? And that is a bit of a teaser for the next video I will likely post this week. What happens when a carrier runs into an unsinkable ship? Maximum lulls. Alright, let's try and just wrap up this game, right? We've got the two caps, so we're going to be winning there we've got the red team in full retreat and you can see i'm playing fairly aggressively with my carrier position and that's my understanding one of the things you want to do with these russian ones and uh, let's go ahead and get this whole drop off and i think we're gonna sink this guy <laughs> oh yeah see what, what are these players actually supposed to do i don't know this is why it kind of seems like such a cheap thrill, right? I'm not really risking my own health. I just get to sit behind an island and do things worse than spam HE. Hmm. But on the other hand, maybe if people would play classes other than battleships, you know, I know. Uh, how do you balance this fact? How do you. Where does the responsibility lie in the fact that so many players play battleships? And not the other classes. I don't know. Here's going to be our third ship sunk. And that just means two more out of these three. So I'm going to continue to push deep into the red territory. Because, yeah, we're just chasing everybody down right now. Of course, uh, another thing that doesn't really help your team is uh, if one of your players are AFK. <laughs> How do we sort this out? How do we sort out the issue that people are dis... I don't know if people are getting disconnected. I don't know if this is just due to the fact that there is one set of servers worldwide and people are lagging. But I know everybody has seen the destroyer that just sits still for a minute and then starts to come into the game. Or the battleship that uh, just goes to the back of the map and disconnects. And in this case, we've got... This Koenig, who I don't believe they've ever moved. This looks like their initial position from uh, when they first would have loaded into the game. Either way, 
I don't have anything to be worried about, so we will just drop another load onto them. And then we're just going to need one last ship sunk, and that's going to be their carrier. So, now it's time to go carrier sniping. Could I have done this at the beginning of the match? Probably. But my understanding is that that isn't all that useful. It is more useful to remove the destroyers at the beginning of the match than to go remove the carrier. And that's something else that these carriers seem like they would excel at. Being able to drop these ordinances outside of AA range. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like these Russian carriers are going to be quite strong. Either way, let's just go find this player. All right, well, we see some of their uh, planes taken off there. And you, you'll notice that I dropped some fighters as well because... Uh, I'm just thinking, okay, if that carrier player were going to go after my teammates, which one would they go after? Well, probably those two there. And so I do get the fighters down, and they're actually going to, I think, shoot down that entire um, squadron. Nonetheless, there's their uh, last ship. I'm going to try and line up something for skip bombers here, but they actually they have a pretty decent angle, and I can't get around them from this island uh, without sacrificing too many planes. And... I just wanted to see if I could get something there and keep them spotted, but hey, we get one little love tap. Either way, we've got a full torpedo squadron ready to go now. We know exactly where the carrier is. I'm sure my teammates are going to be just wailing on them, so let's just head over there. I don't have any uh, engine boost left. I don't know if I should. <laughs> Seems like you wouldn't need to have them at the late game, but again, I'm not the person to ask here. I'm going to go ahead and put down one more fighter set to protect my teammates again. See, this is something that even I, as a never-playing carrier, know, and yet somehow so many carrier players don't. You can actually put down fighter planes to help protect your teammates. Wow, maybe I am truly an above-average CV player now. Uh, I don't think I am. <laughs> anyway... It looks like their carrier is doing the T-Bull shuffle on the back line, so we're just going to try and compensate for how slow they are going and come in on our angle and uh, just line up our shot. I wasn't really sure if we were going to be able to do this. I mean, look at how slow those torpedoes go. I go ahead and put my Nick's, fly, or, uh, Nick's squadron up in the air because I'm thinking I might have to get one more strike on them. But as it were, they are going to just continue to reverse all the way in. And we're going to get crack in 376. Alright, now that we've established that I'm a pro CV player, let's see this scoreboard. 2,420 XP for a good game? I don't know. I mean, I'm at the top, sure, but I don't know. And a GG to everyone else for helping make the impossible possible. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to just stick with surface ships, give this video a like. If you prefer just carriers and subs, give the video a dislike. Questions, comments, tips? Leave them down below. And if you are ambitious enough to want to see the next one, well, think about hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks. I will get back out there for another one. And we will talk then.